You know the Bible says no no man according to the flesh. Yeah. And I want to ask you a question. Are you known in the spirit or do you know yourself in the spirit? Because in the spirit the gates of hell will not prevail. You have power to cast out demons. And a lot of the times we know ourselves according to the flesh, according to our tribe, the color of our skin. In Christ Jesus the Bible says that we are a new creation and that there's no Greek, there's no Jew, there's no Gentile but we are one race of people in Jesus. We are priests and we are kings. We are prophets, we are sons and daughters. In fact, Apostle Peter says that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And that we are a new race of people. That the blood of Jesus has set us free from bondage. That the blood of Jesus has causes us to escape from death. The blood of Jesus has made a way for us to get free from the spiritual entanglements of the fall of and right now we're living in a very very serious hour the time is so 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 short the prophets of old have prophesied about the day we're living in now and we need to be awake we need to be functioning as children of God in the earth and we need to be getting ready because Jesus is coming soon so we must be alert we must be ready we must be watching and we must be in the spirit. Amen? Because those who are led by the spirit are the children of God. Jesus only done what he saw the Father do. And he only said what he heard the Father say. And the power of being in the spirit is that when you speak, your words are spirit words. So be careful what you say about your life. Be careful about the conversation you engage in. Don't speak according to what negativity is happening in the world. Because it will take you away. Because the kingdom that we are now in is in the spirit. The power of Jesus has been given to those who believe. So you can see a mountain and say the mountain's so big, things are so hard, and that's what you will have. Because you don't realize your words are empowering that situation. But if you can take your eyes off the natural, put your eyes on above, take your words out from the word of men and allow the word of God to govern your speech, you will go above that situation. It's not might, it's just a matter of time. Hallelujah. But we are in a critical hour right now. Ezekiel prophesied about the end time arrangement, governmental arrangements. He spoke about Russia, China, Turkey, Iran. Are you listening? I haven't got time to get in to the study of that. But I'm telling you, we are there now. Are you listening? We have never been in the earth where these nations have been aligned like they are now. Now, nobody knows the time or the hour of the coming of Jesus. But Jesus said that there will be signs. In fact, one of the signs is all the nations will gather to have a war against Israel. Do you know, man of God, in the last 24 hours, Iran have launched missile drones against Israel. Did you know that? Of course he does. Amen. But do you know that? And basically, there's coming a, a showdown. But I want to tell you that we don't lose, we win. I want to tell you the gates of hell don't prevail, but we trample down, subjugate and destroy the work of Satan. I'm not saying this that we should live in fear, but I'm saying this that we should live in expectation. And as Pastor Kapunga was prophesying acceleration, that's what's going to happen. Are you listening? What should it take you 12 months to do? So what would take you 12 years to do, you would do less in 12 months. Because time is being compressed. Hallelujah. 
But when you first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things will be added. So we can't be living according to our plan, according to the things that man's agenda. But we must be about the kingdom. We must be first seeking him. And you know, there are people that Jesus has died for that he wants us to reach. Amen? I was telling Pastor Peter just yesterday, I was in Quick Mart. And as I was walking through the aisle, there was a, a woman and she looked like death warmed up. She was with her sister and she had a crutch here. And she's struggling to walk. She just looked like bones. Now I was there. I had to preach today. And I spent Saturday preparing. So I was just quickly getting some, some plantain and some potatoes to, to fry some chips at my place. And then come back. And you know, it probably wasn't convenient for me to stop and minister to the lady. And I want to say, may God, may God upset your complacency today. What do I mean, complacency? We have our routine. We have things that are convenient and things that are not convenient. Are you with me? But really, if we're going to be spirit-led sons and daughters of God, we've got to be ready at the slightest prompt. Now, someone might say, well, I don't hear the Spirit of God or I don't feel his prompting. Well, that's going to change today. But the more you yield to the Spirit of God, the more you'll begin to hear the Spirit of God. Yes. The Spirit of God can tell you, take your business from this location and go to that location. Are you listening? The Spirit of God can prompt you to provide for you in a supernatural way that you would have from God, but you wouldn't have from God if you didn't weren't led by the Spirit. Like Elijah, when he was at the brook Kidron, in the drought, time of famine, and God said, move from this place and go to Zarephath where I have commanded a widow to provide for you. Now, man of God, I don't know about you, but me, I would have been thinking that she was the wife of a very rich husband who passed away and left her with all of her riches. But God's ways are not our ways, amen? Nor are his thoughts our thoughts. But as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than ours. Amen. Amen. So we need to have our minds on the things above, not on the things of the earth. Amen. The things of the earth are fading away. They're growing dim. But the things of God are getting brighter and brighter. Amen. Bigger and bigger. Unto an everlasting, eternal life. Amen. But when he gets to the gate, he finds a widow with one child. Now remember, God had commanded the widow already to provide for Elijah. So I'm not sure if she obeyed straight away. But it took a little prompting from the man of God. That when he asked her for some water, she went to get him some which in a drought, water's scarce. But then he goes to the next level. 
You know, Jesus said, if you give a prophet a glass of water in my name, you will reap a prophet's reward. But as he went to get the water, he said, now come and make me a little cake. And we know the story how the widow professed that she only had barely enough for her and her child and she was going to make the cake, eat it and die. But Elijah, led by the Spirit, begins to prophesy that what you have, make it and bring it to the house of God. Where the anointing is. Where the river's flowing. Where the leaders are in obedience to listening and following the Spirit. Whatever you have, connect it to that place. And you, you, what you have will not run dry. Unless we get out of the flesh, unless we get out of the opinions of men, Unless we get out of the carnal ways of living and get in to the spirit, into the mind of Christ, into the ways of God, we're not going to make, we're not going to make it. Are you listening? But I know I'm here today because God has put faith in every one of you. And faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. And you know, the Word of God will work as you work the Word of God. Amen? As you plant the Word of God, as you allow the Word of God to water, to take root, to germinate, grow into a tree and bear fruit, we will see the miraculous works of God. Amen? God has a plan, has a purpose, and has an assignment for those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Like a small key will unlock a big door. One word of you hearing God and acting upon it. And full throttle you into your destiny. Now, God moves in different ways. The best way to know is the inner witness. Yeah, let peace be your umpire. There's some things you'll go to do if you listen to the moving of God's spirit in you. You don't have a check on it. You don't have a peace. You don't feel to move in that direction. It can be a great, great opportunity, but something in you says, no. I want to tell you there's power in saying no. Amen? And as we lean not on our own understanding, but acknowledge God in all of our ways, he will direct your paths. The Bible says that the feet of the righteous are ordained by God. That the righteous steps, so the steps of a righteous man are ordained by God. So allow faith to govern you. Allow the spirit to be big on the inside of you. Allow the word of God to be the final authority in your life. Hallelujah. I, I came on a word. It was at the end of COVID. My pastor brought a ticket one way and I came. Now during COVID, there was so much uncertainty. Churches are closing. The voice of Antichrist is speaking and with respect to pastors, they were knocking their knees and listening. There was a separation the goat and the sheeps. Hallelujah. But Kenya is a sheep nation in Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. And we've come to enforce that in the spirit realm, that Kenya belongs to our king. Hallelujah. You know you're precious in the sight of God. Amen. But I heard the word. Uncertainty. Lockdowns. Forced medications. It looked a lot like the book of Revelations. And I heard go, so I went. Hallelujah. And 2022, so many wonderful things happened. Provision was provided. Doors open. Relationships connected. Today I stand and I can say with integrity, thousands upon thousands of people have come to know my Lord and Saviour through listening to the Spirit. People put labels on us. People speak words that are destroying over our life. I remember my mum used to tell me that you're not my son. My mum used to tell me I'm so embarrassed about you. My mum used to tell me, why can't you be like other boys? Now, it doesn't matter how tough you are. As a kid, those words get in you. Are you listening? But I'm declaring today that whatever labels people have put on you, I'm taking them off by the power of the name of Jesus. Whatever word curses have been spoke over you, I curse that word and release the word of God over your life. Whatever limitations have formed in your mind because of what people put there, I break it by the anointing today for free. Hallelujah. Because we are the church of Jesus Christ. And Jesus come to seek and save the lost. He come looking for the least likely. It's the foolish things that he takes from the world to confound the wise. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, it says, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Just as from the Lord, sorry, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. So when we talk about the Spirit, we're talking about a person. It's not just a power, it's not a force, but it's the person of Jesus Christ in spirit form. Are you listening? The same spirit that hovered over voidness. When the, when the earth was empty and void, it hovered over the waters. And then God spoke, light be, and whatever he spoke by the spirit came into being. Can you get that? So if you have the spirit of God in you, you are a spirit being, then there's power and ability in your words to either enforce something or to cancel it out. When Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem with the disciples, he went up to a fig tree because he was hungry. It had lots of green leaves, but it had no fruit. And then he cursed the tree and the tree died. Are you listening? And when the disciples saw it on the way back, Jesus said, if you have faith, you will do the same. You will speak to this man. You will speak to this situation. You will call the things that are not as though they are. Hallelujah. You know, a lot of times when we do study in the Bible or we do Bible college or Bible studies, uh, the question we get asked by the seminar teacher is, do you know what you're called to do? How many people have heard that question? Have you been asked before? Have you been asked? Has anyone asked you what are you called to do? Have you been asked? You've never been asked. Have you ever thought about it? Have you thought about it? Huh? Hallelujah. 
When we're asking the question, what are you called to do? Are you called to be a pastor? Are you called to do a business? Are you called to serve in the church? So there's this sense of calling. Are you with me? But the Bible says that those who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Hallelujah. We could know a lot of things in church. We could know a lot of seminary teachings. We could know a lot of bishops, pricks and protocols. But Jesus said in John chapter 17 verse 3 that this is eternal life that you may know the one true God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Unless you are born again, you cannot enter to this kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. There's some ways that are stubborn in our life that have held us bound. They need to go. And I would love to do a teaching about how to get free from things that hold you up in the spirit. Because our obstacle is in the spirit. Our promotion is in the spirit. Our blessing is in the spirit. Are you listening? So we've got to be students of the Spirit. Amen. I want to say there's no limitation where you can go, what you can do, who you can be. When you get God's perspective about your life, and I declare whatever is in the spirit that has been swallowing your virtue, swallowing your provision, swallowing your identity, I curse it and command it to vomit it up now. And I release the sword of the spirit and I decapitate its head right now. Come on, praise Jesus like you, like you received it. Praise Jesus like you received it. And we are called to live by grace, a supernatural empowerment. We are called to be led by the Spirit. And we are called to work the works of Jesus. Amen. Time is short. You could come forward today and have a miracle on Monday. Call the pastor. Pastor, you never guess what happened. This happened. Somebody did this. I got that. Uh, my fees came, I had a miracle, you could come. But that piece of paper that you study so hard to get, you can't take it to eternity with you. Yeah. Hello. Let's stand up on our feet.